Got something free for you. Dodge and burn, Photoshop action. I do dodge and burn a little bit differently from how a lot of other people do it. I'm gonna take you through that in this video and why it's good. But if you just want the action, you can jump through the end now, but you're gonna need the tutorial to kind of know how it works. So you might as well stick around and watch anyway. I do photography for Gentle Giant and I'm approaching nearly a hundred shoots with them. Each shoots about five to seven shots. So you're talking about 500 photos I've taken where I apply this process every single time. And when you're doing 500 shots, you wanna speed up and get things quick. So this action helps me set up Dodge and Burn, get the photos set up, and then you're gonna need one of these things, graphics tablet, and you'll see in a second, it's really, really easy to do. Let's get into it. Okay, let's get started. This is a shot of Wonder Woman that I grabbed off the web to do this. Very quick curves adjustment layer just on top of this, just to fix some of the kind of color balance issues and put a bit more luminosity in the shot. So this is what we're gonna get started on. What I might do is just merge that with the background just so you don't get confused by what this does. So action wise, I've got this folder up here, retouching V1. I'm gonna tell you more about the rest of these actions towards the end of the video, but I'm gonna come straight down here to dodge and burn and hit play. So this is the action I'm gonna give you guys. This creates four adjustment layers. I'm gonna walk through each of these and tell you what it does. So you've got two curves adjustments here for dodge and burn. So what these do is lower the luminosity in the case of the burn. And then if I go up to the uh, dodge, raise the luminosity. So obviously this one's gonna make the whole image brighter. This one is gonna make the whole image darker. Uh, they've both got layer masks, which are black. So obviously you can't see anything that either of these uh, adjustment layers are doing because of the layer mask being black. So the idea with this is you've got to come along with your graphics tablet and or your mouse and paint on areas in white on those layer masks to have them apply the dodge and burn effects, which we're gonna do in a second. On top of that, the both those uh, adjustment layers have got saturation adjustment layers clipped to them as well. And what they do is just control the saturation for the areas that you're applying either a dodge or a burn so that the colors don't go funny. There's one more effect in this that I'm gonna show you in a minute when we've got a bit of dodge and burn going on. And uh, and this is really the power of this setup uh, and this action and why uh, for me it's much, much better than a lot of the dodge and burn layers that pretty much just give you what I've given you here, which is the two curves layers to paint on light areas or dark areas. So let's get into it. Now, I probably haven't picked the best image here because a lot of the shadows in this image are really, really dark already. So immediately going to the burn, um, you know, like you can see here, the, the shadows are, are really, really dark. So I'm not going to be doing much in the way of burning around, you know, a hair or anything because it's already so dark. But we'll do a little bit just to um, show you what it does. So you need your brush. So you can hit B or the brush icon there. And then if you're using a graphics tablet like me, you want flow really, really low. So I usually have flow like 4%. You can go a bit higher if you want. I wouldn't go any higher than like eight to 10 because what happens is when you've got your pen and you're going like this, that will quickly build up. And that's the idea. You wanna be able to build this up gradually and subtly. So we'll start with that. And we're gonna go straight on the burn and then your brush size, I will vary this based on the part of the document I'm working with. So if I'm doing kind of broad stroke overall adjustments, then obviously I'd want it a lot bigger. But if I'm getting into the detail, I'm gonna make this a lot smaller. So your left and right bracket keys uh, on your square bracket keys on your keyboard will make your uh, brush size bigger or smaller as you need. And then what shall we hit? Let's, let's just hit this sort of dark area for breastplate here so if I start painting over that you can see it's darkening it up uh, if I come over the layer mask hold or option down click that you can see what that's done so that 4% flow like if I just paint on the mask there you can see what that does it like it takes a while to build up 
And so to actually paint that to get it to pure white, which would effectively be introducing 100% of the effect, is going to take a while. So yeah, that, I like it like this. I like building this up gradually and not overdoing it. So that gives you control. So that's the burn. I'm going to go straight into her face because I mean, this is going to be the interesting part. Uh, and then what you, what I like to do with dodge and burn, especially on faces, is to just draw out the shadows where they are going to accentuate detail. Lips, nostrils, like kind of here. I could put a little bit in there. Already overdone it. <laughs> That'll do. Uh, just to accentuate like the shape of where you know, the shadows define her face. So just a little bit around the lips there. So those shaded areas around the lips, we can pop those. It really doesn't need much. I mean, the eyes, I could hit her eyelashes, but they're so dark already. You could possibly do her eyebrows as well. I mean, this isn't a studio shot. It's not the same kind of thing you'd get um, in a proper photo shoot. I suspect this was shot very, very quickly on the film set. So it's not ideal material to work with, but certainly once I go to the Dodge side of things, you'll see uh, more dramatic effects. Let's come over to Dodge. So we've put a little bit on the burn, hold or option down. You can see what that does. Now let's go to the burn. So now I'm gonna hit the highlights, right? I mean, I'm gonna make my brush even smaller for this. So you can see there's like little areas like this that where the light's just catching and you can draw those out with the dodge. So same here under a nose, just draw this out. It's very, very easy to overdo this. You know, even with that flow at 4%, you can see it doesn't take much. It, it, this will build up very, very quickly but it gives you enough room to play with. So we can ca get the catch light, speculars in her eyes. Could possibly do a little bit of a dodge on our eyeballs there, just to brighten them up. May want to go to a bigger brush for that. But yeah, this is the idea, right? So I've hit these light spots. Now I'll zoom out, because I've gone in on the detail. And I might come and make the brush a bit bigger. And we might paint a few other areas. And really at this point, I'm kind of just bringing in kind of fake definition where it doesn't even exist. I mean, this isn't a great kind of realistic good dodge and burn. It's, it's definitely on the fake side of things, but you get the idea. So this is what it does, right? One of the tricks with this, which is what I was talking about earlier, is how this is set up in terms of the blending mode on the layer because what I do with both the dodge and the burn is I stop them applying re respectively in the shadows and the highlights. So if you're painting with the dodge, let me just try and show you this. So we'll get the brush back. Oh, lost my cursor here. So what I'm gonna do for this, I'm actually gonna jack the flow up really, really high. So this is effectively apply the effect as much as you can get it in one hit. So if I paint like straight over her eye like that, what you'll notice is this only applies in the lighter areas. So it doesn't apply any dodge to shadow areas. Same thing with the burn. So if I go on the burn and I say go across there, it's leaving the highlight areas alone. This is really powerful because when you're doing dodge and burn, sometimes your paint strokes will end up going over the opposite kind of luminosity value. So her teeth area here, this is a perfect example, right? So I might want to do a dodge on her teeth here. And so I'm painting kind of the white of her tooth, but I don't want to knock out those shadow values there. So what this will do, I'm going to make her look kind of gap tooth bugs bunny by doing this so maybe it's not the best example uh, but what it's not doing is it's not light lightening up the shadows so the way that's done is if you see this little icon here this is actually the blending options so if you double click on that you can see what that does is it applies blend if so effectively this is saying okay this is going to be a dodge layer this is going to be something you paint on to get highlights on the image but what this is going to do is say, well, only apply in the light area. So effectively, everything up here is going to be where your dodge applies. Everything down here in the shadows is where it's not going to touch it. Now, what that means is you can come in here and play with this. So you might go, well, actually, I want that dodge effect 
kind of applying more in the shadow. So just look at her teeth while I'm dragging this up and down. You can see what I'm talking about. So that dodgy effect where I was doing quite careless painting is sort of seeping into the shadows and it doesn't look great. This helps you control that. Equally, if you want to dial it in even more to the highlights, you can drag it up nearer to the white and you'll find it, it you'll find it refines the kind of uh, area it paints right down to the highlight detail. So if you again, if you look at her nose where I painted those highlight areas of her nose, as I drag that all the way to the top, it just lessens the effect. So you have this control with Blend If. So that's it on the dodge, exactly the same thing on the burn, but it's the other way around. So on the burn, the Blend If is saying, well, only apply burn effects to the dark areas, don't touch the light. So if I drag that up, I forget where I did the burns, but Suffice to say, this would start affecting those highlight areas um, and not giving you as good as a result. So this is what this whole action does. This dodge and burn action sets all this up, sets the layers up all ready to paint. So all you've got to do is come in with your brush, set your flow up, and then you can just go over and paint on the dodge, the burn, and you're good to go. If you need to make tweaks, You've got those blending options there. You've also got the actual curve adjustment of the adjustment, say it again. You've also got the actual curve adjustment itself. So I could come in here and boost this up even more, make the uh, dodge here much more intense, same on the burn. So you've got lots of options to play with. So this is the whole effect. So let me tell you how you can get this. I've put this action into a pack you can get over here on Gumroad. So you'll find a link to this below in the description on the video. There's also the whole YouTube card thing you can tap on the video itself and you can see that over here. Now don't get scared off by the price. This is completely free, but here's the catch. Subscribers only. So if you subscribe to the channel, there's a subscriber only video I've got and in that, you'll find a discount code that will get you 100% off so you can get this for $0. Now, just to sweeten the deal, not only are you going to get the dodge and burn action, you're going to get a whole bunch of other actions, which is essentially everything I've got in that folder. So these are all the actions I use for retouching on all the work I do. So this is all completely free. You can grab all this. As I say, all you've got to do, subscribe to the channel, head over to the channel page, watch my subscriber only video, you'll get the discount code for this. There's other stuff in there as well. So there's other products for subscribers that I put in there um, because I wanna look after you guys and I want you to subscribe and I want you to see all the new videos I'm publishing. So there's plenty of other great videos on the channel. If you don't wanna subscribe and you don't wanna stick around, that's absolutely fine. Um, but I am gonna be doing more of this in the future, giving away actions, resources, photos, all this sort of stuff. So subscribe and you can get access to all this. So that's pretty much it. If you've got any comments, let me know below. If you're having trouble accessing, applying the discount code, anything like that, let me know below and I'll see you in the next video. Head to toyshooter.com for more tutorials, resources and help with Photoshop compositing. You can also subscribe to my free newsletter by visiting shoot.toys in your browser or clicking on the link on screen. You can also follow my work on Instagram at instagram.com slash shoot.toys. Subscribe to the channel to watch a special subscriber only video, which you'll find on my channel page after subscribing. Lastly, you'll find links to all the places I've just mentioned in the description for this video below.